Creed 3 hit theaters at the beginning of March, and it's quickly become my favorite release of the year so far. Let's be honest, Spider-Verse will probably take that spot for good in June, but I like to take this time to gush about a good old boxing movie while it's new. I should correct myself actually, because these films aren't really about boxing at all. This was true about Rocky as well. The Rocky films are all about the titular character and his relationships. We love them for Rocky as a person, not Rocky as a boxer. Anybody can throw a punch, but only one guy can say, Yo, the Creed films serve as a legacy sequel of sorts, a way for Balboa to pass the baton to the next generation via Adonis. The first two Creed movies are both brilliantly crafted works of art, justifying their existence with a well-written protagonist and respectful integration of a beloved character. But when you remove the franchise roots from the mix, go for a much darker tone, and throw Michael B. Jordan in the director's chair, how do things turn out? Pretty darn well, apparently. I believe Creed 3 or Creed the Third or Creed Third Times the Charm, however you're supposed to say it, is the first one that feels like a Creed movie. Trust me, I love the integration of the Rocky characters in the first two films. But Creed 1 and 2 are almost a bit too reliant on their predecessor. With the removal of familiar faces, however, it allows the writers to fully flesh out Adonis's life and relationships in his own spotlight. Like I said before, these films function best when the focus isn't on boxing itself, but when the sport is used merely to facilitate the character's inner conflicts and development. That's why Rocky IV is so terrible. It's just boxing. Well, two-thirds boxing and one-third montage. Creed 3 has its priorities in the right place, not afraid to take a deep dive into a Adonis' past that still haunts him to this day. Let's just say it right out the gate, Dame is one of, if not the greatest opponent this franchise has ever seen. I can't really call him a twist villain since he's advertised everywhere to be the adversary, but the development of his antagonism is done impeccably. His introduction, while friendly and harmless, maintains this ominous vibe that clashes with everything we've seen so far. The beginning of this film has us seeing just how great Adonis' life is now. He's gone from running the streets of Philly to some cementing a legacy as great as his father's. His wife is selling records left and right, retirement lets him have tea time with his daughter. Life is good. But then a man outside the gym stops him dead in his tracks. Dame. You're not Dame. That's the least of your problems. Just look at yourself. The actual audacity for you to just casually waltz around in a fit like that? Because last time I checked, the circus wasn't coming to town. <laughs> oh, okay, you got beef with my drip, man? Beef? I got a whole butchery. Well, I guess there's only one way to settle this then, huh? Oh, give me a break, dude. I'd like to see you try. Give it a shot. Give me your best shot. Come on. Thank God that guy's gone. Guys, I'll be frank with you, he had zero drip. Unlike me, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. If you're looking to compete with the Adonis Creed fashion game, these guys have got you covered. Everything from shirts to joggers to hoodies to beanies, Into the AM has an extensive library of high quality, comfortable clothing for everyone. Whether you need just a good old solid color tee, drip for the gym, or these gorgeous designs to express yourself, there's something here for you. The graphic tees are definitely my favorite. I love this jacked astronaut with the bicep pump going. I mean, Michael B. Jordan who? I love how mine fit, and even as I goof off in front of a green screen for hours, they keep me comfy and motivated to keep going. If any of this interests you, use my link in the description and pinned comment into the am.com slash GPS drip 10 for 10% off your order. That's on top of the already great bundle deals of three basic tees for $49.95 or three fancy schmancy graphic ones for 60 bones. Thanks again to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video and now that that guy's gone I, I guess I'll record the rest. So thanks to a flashback in the intro we know these two used to be best buds but for whatever reason Dame has spent the last 18 years in prison and the two haven't spoken since. We don't know why and that uncertainty lets each conversation play out with this unsettling mystique. They're smiling, they're cracking jokes but something isn't right. This scene of the two at the restaurant is a masterclass in tone direction. On paper, it's just two bros having lunch. Yet the cinematography, score, and nuanced performances bring this lingering uneasiness, keeping us and Adonis on edge. Dame's motivations are slowly revealed bit by bit, and it's hard not to sympathize with a situation as tragic as his. Despite losing those two decades, he's managed to keep his chin up by just 
barely clinging to that boxing dream. When we're told just how Dame was arrested, it hurts even more. Imagine having to sit on the sidelines your whole life, all the while witnessing the guy responsible for your incarceration living out your dream. He's bitter, he's jealous, and he's ready to do whatever it takes to get back what he believes to be his. I can't stress enough how well Dame's transition from this old pal just wanting a shot to the terrifying heavyweight champion was handled. Reveals like these are tricky, but when done right, the payoff is well worth it. When we and Adonis first witness the manipulative nature hiding behind his friendly facade, it's shocking in the best way possible, yet not out of place at all. Every conversation between the two so far has been meticulously coded with the perfect amount of Dame's jealousy and resentment. In any other film, we should trust him by now, but that invisible barricade stops us. What's even more rewarding is seeing Donnie's character development stem from this. Just like us, Dame's presence makes him uncomfortable. After all, he is a living reminder of his mistake that night. All his life, Adonis has coped with his past by shutting it out, desperately trying to forget it. Even when Dame returns, he still tries to escape that memory, that perpetual guilt, but it outruns him every single time. The writers then expertly use his closest relationships to showcase the repercussions of cornering yourself like this. Bianca is of course the highlight, easily being the best supporting character in this film. When Donnie closes himself off from everyone, she calls him out for it. You trying to feel sorry for me or no, something? No, I don't want to feel sorry for you. I want to understand you. I want to know what is going on There's with you in talk my about. house. Please. I don't want to talk about anything. I've been trying to forget it. It's dead, leave it, leave it, let it lie. Keeping all this inside and refusing to tackle the ongoing issue has caused that trauma to leak into every aspect of his life. Attempting to bury that remorse has caused all that contrition to just boil up and break everything Adonis has left. If that wasn't punishment enough, this is immediately followed up with the news of his mother passing. And a loss as devastating as this is enough for even Adonis to finally take a step back. The scene of him apologizing to Bianca is probably the best sequence of this film. He finally tells her the full story, and it is painful as hell, but at the same time, there's this massive burden lift off his shoulders. It is this raw, unfiltered heartache, yet at the same time, so cathartic. You are a good man, Adonis. I don't know anymore. You have got to try to forgive yourself, so that you can begin to believe that you deserve the life that you have earned. The subtext of this conversation is the very essence of Creed 3. This idea that you have to confront your demons or they will haunt you to no end. Donnie must take a step back before he can take two steps forward, and that step back is embodied by Dame. This final showdown has it all. If y'all didn't know, Michael B. Jordan is apparently like a massive weeb. And also, I've got a huge Japanese, Japanese anime influence on a lot of my fighters. I'm an anime nerd, so. It's kind of awesome. And that anime inspiration oozes its way into every aspect of this beatdown. I remember first watching this brutal gut punch with the sweat jumping off his back, then going home to realize it's a Dragon Ball Z reference. In all seriousness, I'm so glad Jordan got to go this route. We've had over a dozen matches over the course of this franchise, and it's getting exponentially more difficult to create a memorable and unique fight. Especially considering the cinematic marvels, like the midpoint of Creed 1, where the whole thing is done in one shot, like, dude, I cannot imagine being that cameraman. Yet despite Despite that ridiculously high bar, Creed 3 still absolutely delivers when it comes to spectacle. Heck, at one point they get transported to the Shadow Realm, and then you got this amazing imagery of Donnie being thrown against prison bars by Dame as these two fighters are caged and haunted by the memories of each other. Damn, man! And while the sound design and choreography already hit extremely hard on their own, that impact is multiplied tenfold by the heart of this duel. It blows my mind that this is the first time we've had an adversary with such a personal and intimate connection with the protagonist. We've had the underdog story, the challenging of complacency, the uncharismatic robot on the juice, but never an opponent this emotionally taxing. These punches hit hard because it's a brawl between two broken men, desperately trying to mend what's left. Every time they get into the clinch, it's this uncomfortable, painful hug as they desperately try to accept each other back into their lives. Jonathan Major's performance in this film is phenomenal through and through. But I'll be damned if the look he wears on his his face throughout this fight doesn't shatter my heart more than anything. Dame is always on the brink of tears and that conflict within him just grows and grows until abruptly 
it's resolved. Adonis landing this final blow has a sigh of relief wash over both of them. They have finally tackled the demon torturing them for years, and with that triumph, they are freed at last. They have a reconciliation in the locker room afterwards, and this scene plays out with just enough dialogue. Neither of them needs to explain much at all, they understand each other more than anybody. But what's crucial here is the removal of blame and guilt. At last, they point the fingers away from each other, but also learn not to point them at themselves. They take responsibility, yes, but also convey the second layer of Creed 3's theme. On a surface level, Creed 3 is a movie about confronting your fears, in this case your past, rather than suppressing it and making the pain increasingly unbearable. But thanks to such a deliciously complicated dynamic, that theme benefits from an extra coating of nuance. It's this notion that you shouldn't feel guilty about what's out of your control, and the arduous yet integral process of self-forgiveness. Having Adonis and Dame make up solidifies that moral in the most powerful way possible. We've witnessed all the strife they fought through, the literal blood, sweat, and tears. All we want is for their journeys to continue with a step forward on the right foot. If you can get the audience to care that much about your characters, then you have more than succeeded as a director. If you're still watching, thanks so much for sticking around to the end. I feel like my channel's becoming more unpredictable than like Nintendo, so I really do appreciate you guys being here regardless. If you want to know the progress of upcoming videos, my Twitter is linked below, and so is my Discord if you're keen to chat with some cool fellas. So thank you again, and as always, I hope you have a fantastic day.